Hello you guys and welcome to Managing Marriage Mini. Uh, we are going to embark on a new journey, a new study, a new series. And these are based on our Managing Marriage curriculum, which is actually uh, eight studies in total. And what we're going to, what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to give you five minute um, mini videos, kind of like a summary of each one of the studies. Now, I'll be doing these in the car, so don't be too distracted, but these are designed for you as you are on the go, right? We live in a very busy world. We're on the go. We're constantly driving, and I apologize in advance if my videos are kind of shaky because I'm driving with you. And so, um, if you want the full length study, just stay tuned. We'll give you some information at the end of this mini series and give you an opportunity to take the actual course with the study guides, the homework, and the actual digital study that comes along with it. And that you could do either if you're planning on getting married or if you're already married and you want kind of a refresher course. So let's jump into it today. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about a covenant of companionship. A covenant of companionship. And again, this is Managing Marriage Lesson 1. I'd like to discuss the Greek word phileo. The Greek word phileo. It's where we get the English word Philadelphia from. The city of brotherly love. And phileo... Um, c comes with that meaning of friendship. Now, the Greek language is a fascinating language because in our English language, the word love is used for everything, right? We might say, you know, I love Krispy Kreme donuts or I love pizza. And in the same conversation, I might say, I love my wife or I love my dog. We don't have any different words, but in the Greek language, they had different different forms of that word love. And so phileo talks about companionship, talks about friendship. Friendship is important, right? I mean, I think all of us would agree that having a solid friendship is important, right? We need to have friends. We need to have close friends. And I would add that having a close friendship with your spouse or your future spouse is vital to the relationship. It's vital because as the years go by, as times go by, the challenges of life, the storms of life, the trials of life will have you um, questioning the relationship. Maybe even making you want to bail out and leave the relationship but having a strong friendship in the relationship uh, is going to keep you together right in the book of ecclesiastes we're told that it talks about a three-folded cord a three-folded cord is not quickly broken so the middle of the cord is christ uh the the one side of the cord is is man and the other side of the cord is woman and if you intertwine those with christ in the center you have a three-folded cord that is not quickly broken. So obviously Christ is at the center of the relationship and we are entwined in that, but we are bonded by the friendship. In the book of James, we're told that we are to pray for one another. We're to lay hands on each other that we might be healed. Uh, that's what a friend does, right? A friend is there for one another. A friend encourages, a friend counsels, a friend you know, sees you on your good days and, and on your bad days. A friend doesn't leave you hanging. And when the whole world turns against you, your friend, your best friend, stays with you. So I challenge you to make your spouse your best friend, uh, your future spouse your best friend, and be there for one another, okay? Do that, and your marital relationship or future marriage will be blessed. Hopefully you get a little value from that one. I will see you on the next lesson, okay? Bye-bye.